All right, everybody, welcome back to the Sarah Centrella Show. Today is a short coaching episode on communication, specifically communication do's and don'ts. Now, this is something that I have been um, personally just passionate about. I think the last couple of years, it's one of those things that uh, I have absolutely noticed both in, you know, work environments and dating, um, even in friendships and definitely online on social media. Um, as a whole, I feel like humans have lost the ability to communicate. And now we have all of this AI stuff. Um, and so, gosh, just even the last couple of years, I have noticed communication deteriorate in such a massive way. And for someone who is very verbal and probably over communicates if anything else, it drives me freaking nuts. Okay. It drives me insane. So the more I've kind of, um, thought about it, the more I really realized like, Hey, maybe a lot of us were not taught communication skills. Um, we're not taught even kind of basic <laughs> interaction stuff, or maybe we've forgotten it. And certainly the younger generation who has, you know, grown up with phones and all of that stuff, my gosh, I feel like they're not going to get any education around that. So today I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the simple things that you can do to communicate better, whether it's at work, whether it is, you know, in your own household, in your family, um, in dating, you name it, uh, as a boss, as an employee, doesn't really matter, kind of everything I'm going to share today is applicable um, across the board. Uh, So I'm just going to jump right on into it. The very first thing that I want to throw out there is when it comes to communication, be an opener and not a closer. And what I mean by that is most communication that I see happening these days is literally all one-sided. It is maybe someone asks you a question and you'll give a response and that'll be it. Like you're, you're shutting down the conversation by only uh, responding to the question. Think for a quick second, like, how can I continue this conversation? How can I learn a little bit more about that person? And honestly, the simplest thing you could do is say, and you question mark. So throw it back. Like communication in my mind should be a volley. It should be back and forth. Um, And most of the time, what I see is like dead stop, dead stop, dead stop. And nothing is more annoying to me than that. Okay. So that's just a rule of thumb. Like even with, you know, your girlfriends, I'm guilty of it too, where, you know, someone will be like, Hey, how are you doing today? And I'll answer, like, take that extra second and just say, how's your day going? How are you? What's going on in your world? Like throw the volley back. Okay continue the conversation. Um, So I'm going to first start off with the do's. What to do? The first one is with all the AI and all the tech that we're surrounded with 24-7 social media, all that kind of stuff. um, I think I'm going to go into the don'ts when it comes to that. uh, And there's a lot of them, but there are ways that you can really use it to your best advantage to um, open up communication with someone and One of those is voice memos. Make sure that the person you're sending them to, um, that that's a communication style that they also like. They like to get them. They're able to listen to them. A lot of people aren't if it's at work. Um, So just kind of be aware of that. If you are leaving a voice memo, don't drag on for five minutes about nothing or about dead silence. Like, you know, have it be a conversation. Say what you want to say. Open it up again to them. But hearing... Uh, your voice is a great way to to have uh, communication be open. And also that tone of voice thing is so important and it gets lost in text message all the time. So use those tools at your disposal to help bring um, communication out uh, both in yourself and in whoever you're talking to. The other one is um, FaceTime. So I love both of those two. I think they're uh, a great way to connect with a person, um, a great way to encourage 
kind of two-way dialogue and expressing yourself. Um, and so both of those I really like. Uh, all right, one of the first tips that I have on the do column is ask questions. Ask questions. That is one of the best ways that you can get to know someone. Um, certainly, if you're out in the dating world or you're out, met, you know, um, meeting new people in any environment, um, whether you know you're at a new job, a new town, doesn't matter. Ask questions. People typically like to talk about themselves, uh, and it's a very easy way for someone to start opening up and you to find kind of whatever um, common ground there might be. And it helps people feel heard and seen, which is going to help them remember you and all the good stuff. And I know not everyone feels comfortable doing that. They might feel like, oh, that's intrusive or am I being nosy or whatever, but you get better at it the more you practice it. And without question, I mean, Everyone that I've ever interacted, I've really, you know, very rarely have everyone have ever, ever heard someone say like, oh, huh, that's interesting. People are much more open than you think that they would be just by being curious and by trying to get to know them. Um, so I have a couple examples on some generic ones that can help get the conversation um, going and just get that connection up. One is tell me more. So whatever they just said, tell me more about that. Um, that's a great one. Another one is if you're not quite sure what someone meant or they sent you a one or two word text, just say, what do you mean? Or what do you mean by that? Can you uh, explain a little more? Also ask for um, an example. Do you have an example? Can you give me an example of that? Um, what was that like? What did that feel like? Um, you know, there's lots of, of different kind of open-ended questions that you can ask that get someone to, to um, open up and share with you and kind of build human connection instead of closing ourselves off. Um, and then this is a big one. <laughs> this is a big one. It kind of falls in the do's and the don'ts category. Respond with words. Use your words, people please use your words. If we stop communicating with our words and just leave it all to uh, either AI, like now, no joke on Facebook, you know this already, but like, this is kind of what got me super annoyed this morning is I was on Facebook and um, someone had posted something, you know, really sad. And I was thinking about what I wanted to say to this person, taking that moment, right? To actually be a human being and connect with this person. And as soon as I hit comment, Facebook gave me five different things I could say, right? And I was just like, what the fuck is going on in our world today where I don't even have to use brain power to actually connect with this person to tell them something that, you know, I'm actually thinking. I literally don't need to use my brain at all. I just pick one of five. Like, come on, people. Oh, anyway, so that is super annoying to me, but it's also like really annoying when um, I'm texting somebody and I'm sharing whatever, maybe I'm responding to a question and I'm giving them, I'm actually communicating, I'm <laughs> using my words, um, or I'm sharing something about myself and all I get back is one of those freaking little reactions, which drive me absolutely insane. Yeah, maybe I got a heart. Maybe I got a thumbs up. Maybe I got an exclamation. I'm sorry. What do you actually think about what I just said? Use your words. Like, come on. If we don't use them, we're going to lose them. And if I think about how much our communication has gone downhill in the last five, 10 years, I cannot imagine what it's going to be like in the next 10 years if we continue to let this happen. Use your words, okay? It's just, to me, it's disrespectful if I took the time to actually say something, to share something, to open up, to do anything. I use my words and that's all I get in return. Like, I'm gonna shut down. I'm gonna be like, why bother? Okay. Um, another one is acknowledge what somebody has said. I think that's a lost art as well. So you can do that through a lot of ways. You can be like, yeah, I totally understand that or I get that. 
Um, here's what I think about that. But what I see happen all the time is someone will completely ignore every single thing you just said, and they'll jump right in with whatever, like how they thought or, you know, what their reaction is to it, completely not acknowledging anything you said. And that is another one of those things where it's just like, why did I even bother? <laughs> why did I even say something if, if you're just going to go right to you? Um, so acknowledge, and you can do that through a lot of kind of generic ways, like how that's really interesting or whatever. You don't have to like go in depth on every single interaction, but don't ignore what someone said and just jump to yourself or jump to the next topic uh, or whatever. Okay, another one is be empathetic. Even if you're not an empathetic person, all of these are skills you can teach yourself and get better and better at over time. If someone is sharing something that is personal to them and is maybe difficult um, or is a difficult time they're going through or any of those things, like, again, don't just heart it, like it, be like, oh, sorry, or whatever. Like, find a way to be empathetic. Like, how can you show them that, hey, what you said matters to me? And I'm sorry you're going through this and how can I help? Or is there anything I can do? There's lots of kind of responses like that that you can practice and get better at. Um, but those are the little things that help someone feel seen and heard and feel closer to you in whatever capacity. Um, so letting people know that you are hearing them and you're actually paying attention it's huge and you definitely can get better at it over time with practice. Uh, okay, so on my don'ts column, <laughs> uh, I have a few as well. Number one is don't make it all about you. See this happen all the time as well, um, where every reaction is just what you think, what you experience, what whatever, and you're not listening to what the other person is saying. So. You know, we're all guilty of that, I think. I'm definitely guilty of it too. But take a pause. And even if maybe you're you're texting and you sent a response that kind of didn't hear them and you're coming right, you know, back and talking about yourself, think about it for a minute or two and say, wait a second, like, how can I acknowledge what they said? How can I not make this all about me? Um, my biggest pet peeve in the entire world, do not ignore come on, you guys, like, can't even believe I have to put this on the list, but it's crazy the percentage of people who just flat out ignore you these days. Like, I see it happen in friendships, I see it happen in work and colleagues and everywhere. It's just, to me, it is the rudest shit in the world. I fucking hate it. Um, you know, I'm the type of person that I'm going to respond to everybody who reaches out to me, good, bad, or ugly. I know that is not everybody's communication style. I get it, but you can get better at it. And if there's people that you care about in your life, show them some respect. If they have taken the time to reach out to you, show them the respect to at least respond. That is the bare minimum. That isn't even, you know, being a good person and reaching out to them first <laughs> or whatever. Like, just show up, be human. I mean, this is stuff that when I was growing up, we would have never, ever thought to treat people this way. Um, and it's just so commonplace these days that it's really taken, taken for granted. And um, it's up to us to not let that happen. Okay. Um, and here's another one. Don't just talk with emojis. Again, this goes back to use your words, right? Don't just use the reactions in, you know, all the, the various ways of social media and in your text or whatever, um, or emojis, like talk with words, please. Um, and then this is, this is an interesting one. Don't just be the responder. So I want you to kind of really think about your relationships. Think about your best friends. Think about your kids, whoever else is in your life. Um, think about your spouse, the person you're dating, whatever. Are you just the responder? In other words, they are reaching out to you. They are asking you how your day was. They are 
sharing something and all you're ever doing is just responding to them? Or are you showing up and putting effort? If they are giving you effort and if they're opening up and they are sharing, are you doing the same thing? Because there's nothing worse than a one-sided relationship. There's nothing worse than a one-sided friendship. And there's definitely nothing worse than a one-sided text log. <laughs> okay. So are you showing up as well? Okay. Um, and then the other thing when it comes to communication, um, as, as it comes to everything else, like communicate and don't demand, right? Instead of saying, you have to do this, or you never do this, or whatever the case is, share what you need. Learn enough about yourself, have that knowledge and self-awareness to understand what it is you need, how you operate best, um, how you receive communication best, how you give communication best, and then share that with the people in your life. Don't just demand they do it one way. And always, always, always the key to good communication is once you've expressed yourself, volley it back. Say, hey, does that make sense? And is that something you, you feel like you're okay with? And most importantly, what can I do for you? What do you need? What is a good you know, way for me to communicate with you? What is one thing I should never do? <laughs> you know, like what is one of those things that just drives you crazy that I shouldn't do? I want to know that stuff. All of that is important data for me. It helps me show up better in every relationship I have in my life. Um, and it helps me show up in the way that you want me to. And so always volley that back. What do you need instead? What can I do? Um, give someone else that opportunity as well. There's also, um, you know, a bunch of different preferences. I'm sure you could go Google them. I, you know, I have no idea, but I'm sure there's lots of stuff out there. Um, but you could find some generic kind of preferences, pref, ah, gotta say this right, um, prefaces for how you open up a conversation. Um, so you could say something like, well, what is best for me is X. Or um, I was thinking X, or this is what I've been feeling. So those are just some examples of how you could preface, preface things that you're about to say in a way that is open. It's, you know, encouraging dialogue. It's sharing your thoughts and feelings. Um, and then at the end, again, volley it back. So I think those are... Those are amazing. Those are easy. Literally, you could probably go online and print off a list of those and just start using them. Um, yeah, so those are my top do's and don'ts when it comes to communication. I think the bottom line for me is that, you know, raising children who have grown up with technology um, and who also went through through COVID and were home for a year plus uh, in school. It's terrifying to me to see how little their whole generation communicates with each other, um, how little they interact, how little they talk. Um, but not only that, it's my generation too. I mean, it's across the board. People just are not communicating the way that we used to. We don't open up and share things. We don't create safe spaces for people to come to us. We do all of these little things that just shut people down and shove them away. Um, and there's simple things that you can do to reverse that. And if we don't do it, who is gonna do it? Cause definitely technology ain't gonna do that shit for us. They're just gonna keep making it worse and worse and worse and harder and harder for us to think, for us to cognitively put our own thoughts and feelings together and share them with another person. That's the biggest thing, right? If you're relying on all of that stuff, and I know there's people listening to this who are like, oh, that just makes it so easy. Oh, I can just quickly, you know, hit like or quickly thumbs up. Like, how is that being received? You know what I mean? Like, are you taking two seconds to say, 
it would take me literally 10 seconds to actually give this person a response to what they said, make them feel heard, continue the conversation instead of shutting them down versus just hitting that little quick like. Think about it. That's what I want you to leave from this conversation. These are just my things. I mean, this is my things. Maybe it sounds like I'm on a soapbox. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> this is my stuff. And I got to tell you, like when you're out there dating, you see this pervasively, like it is insane how poorly people communicate these days. So rather than just being annoyed by it, I thought I would share some of these do's and don'ts. And I hope that you start kind of paying attention in your own life about how you are showing up for the people that you're interacting with every single day? Um, are you doing things to create and nurture that human contact and to build relationships across the board? Or is your behavior shutting that down, um, stopping the communication, making people feel invisible, making them feel unimportant, making them feel unheard? And if you are, it is up to you to change it. And I really, really hope that you do. All right. Until next time, hustle and thrive.